Don't I just make myself have to keep painting over and over and over again, trying to hide what I wouldn't confront? Oh, and the people who have made the life's decision to paint over what they won't confront. Yes, I need a conquest, but sooner or later, I've got to go back to the source, the king of it all. The king of it all. I killed the men, but if I don't kill the source, I painted over the stain, but if I don't fix the leak, I demanded excellence of the kid, but if I don't change the atmosphere in my house, You'd be surprised at the people who are punishing the child. <laughs> but the child is just showing the problem that's going on in the house. And you're trying to beat out of the child something that is just a sign of something that's... Oh Lord, that got kind of quiet on that one, Jesus. I was doing good on that conquest part, but when I got to that confrontation part, I lost a good percent, about 45% of the church. You, you know, I, I, I tend to be, I think that I am a confrontational person. And when you say you're confrontational, people really hear you're mean. Be and the reason they associate anger with confrontation is because weak people have to get angry to confront. I used to think that real hot-headed people were hotheads because they were strong. They're not hotheads because they're strong. They're hotheads because they're scared. And they have to work up all that anger to tell you what you could have just simply said. I'm not going. You don't have to break up the whole house. What I mean by confrontational is not necessarily adversarial. It just means that I refuse to live in denial about an issue that I need to confront. That's right, to the 10 people that clap, thank you very much. I thought that was a very good point. <clears throat> to not confront things is not healthy. To, 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 not, to not be able to verbalize what needs to be said, whether it's good or bad. If, if, if something needs to be confronted, not confronting it doesn't kill it. It just makes it get worse. So I like to tell people, I told one person, I said, I want to feel good when I see you. And right now when I see you, I don't feel good. So I need to tell you what I'm thinking, whether you change or not. I just need to get it out of me so that I don't have this videotape rolling in my head when you walk down the aisle. I didn't like what you did when you did. I do it for my emotional well-being. I do it for my spiritual health. I do it so that I won't have hatred or malice or envy or strife. I confront my kings. You just got to confront it. If you're trifling, you just got to confront it. If you're lazy, you just got to confront it. You got to stop blaming everybody. You just got to confront your own devils and say, look, we're going to have it out today. You're lazy, your mother was lazy, your grandmother was lazy. You don't know how to hold a relationship together. Your mother didn't know how to hold a relationship. Your grandmother, none of your aunties know how to hold a relationship. So there's no need of you getting up in his face, popping your neck about what's wrong with him. 
You simply need to confront the enemy in a me. Okay, thank you. Okay, testing. We're going to find something that works today. Confronting it doesn't mean that you have to be hostile or angry. It just means you got to deal with whatever you got to deal with so that you can really recover what you need to recover. Because you cannot have full recovery if you can't confront yourself. Do you not know the hardest person to confront is you? I do a whole lot better confronting other people than I do confronting me. Confronting yourself means confronting your version of your story. I lost him again, Lord. This isn't going good. The mic went out, the crowd went out, and I still got two more points to go, Jesus. I don't know whether we're going to make it or not. C confronting your version of your story. Maybe I learned it wrong. You, you, you know, there, everybody on the news is talking about uh, this newscaster who, who embellished the story about what happened. Do you see that? You know, I thought you did. I'm not calling any names, but every, everybody, all the networks, about all the journalists just going, da, 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 da. he embellished the story. Uh, he had it. Uh, da, da. His integrity is being covered by the journalists. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you something. Every person in here remembers things wrong. You re always remember your story to your advantage. Oh my God, there's some shouting stuff in here. You may not be a journalist and you may not be on TV, but when we turn on your channel, we get your version of the story and you always come out the hero and you look better in your story than you do when your kids tell the story. They so while you're castigating him for changing the narrative of the story, you must understand that psychologically all of us have a version of the story where we got the facts wrong. How many have ever heard your mother, your grandmother tell a story you remembered it differently? <laughs> they left out some key factors in the story. Yes, I smarted off, but it was only after you did. We remember our stories from our perspective. And what stops us from recovering is our unwillingness to confront the version of the story you taught to yourself. You taught it to yourself. You taught it to yourself so well, you really remember it that way. You don't, you, you're not lying. The helicopters were everywhere. There was no parachute and you had to jump. Confront your story. Confront your version of what happened in your first marriage. Or it will happen in your second. And your third. <laughs> and your fourth. And the reason it keeps happening is that you never confront your version of the story. And anything you cannot confront, point four, you cannot conquer. Joshua says, roll the stone away. I'm going to confront these kings. And then when he confronts them, he brings them out. He throws them down on the ground. And he says, I'm going to conquer what I confronted. We could not talk about con conquering until we talked about confronting. Some people are trying to conquer what you will not confront. But once you confront it, the next step is to conquer it. Am I helping anybody? Yes. To conquer it. To conquer
conquer it, to conquer it, to conquer it, to resist it, to not let it have its way, to not let it have control, to not let it destroy your destiny, to not let it kill your future. We're, we're going to conquer it. How many people will admit this Sunday morning you got something to conquer? I'm your pastor and I got a whole list. I admire you because you got something to conquer. I got some things. I got at least five kings up in this mug. I got to pick which one of y'all I'm going to fight today. The rest of y'all shut up and stay in the corner while I deal with this one right here. Can I get a good amen? amen? And he says, I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to conquer it. And I'm going to conquer it. And what I love about conquering it, he brought the kings out and he threw them down on the ground. And then he had the men with him to put their foot on the king's neck. Oh my God. To, to be able to feel the feel of winning. There is nothing like it in the world. Once you get a taste of being a conqueror, you're going to conquer again and again and again and again. Can I get a witness? There's somebody that's been on a losing streak for a long time, but God has recently turned some things around and you got your foot on something. Glory to God. You got your foot on it. Touch your neighbor and say, I got my foot on it. I feel like 2015 is going to be my turnaround year. This is the season that I'm going to get my foot on some things that have been out of control in my life. I've got my foot on it. Joshua could have just killed him, but he didn't. He said, come here, boy, put your foot on it. This is what success feels like. This is what victory feels like. This is what forward feels like. God says this is your year to feel the feeling of a conqueror. You have been in the valley long enough, God. He puts his puts his foot on it. I never will forget when my mother was teaching me teaching me to make bread. She said, there's something about dough. You got to feel it to know it. She said that she didn't believe in all of these uh, modern day machines. There was something she taught us about the touch of the dough, the, the texture. C certain things you know by feeling. The feeling of conquering. The feeling of knowing when to shift gears. You, you, you can't just read it in a book. You, it's a feeling that tells you it's time for shifts. Put the clutch in. You, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, see, they, 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 these automatic clutches are messing us up. It used to be that you lived in a day that you and the car were one in the process. And the car would give you a signal and you participated in the process. And we're losing our sense of feelings. And we're depending on automation. And it's taking away our sensitivity. But real victory requires sensitivity. It's not just intellect. It's instinct. You can hire all the degrees you want to, but on the job, there are certain things that only happen by instinct. You can read books about prayer, but you'll never be a prayer warrior until you have the instinct of prayer. I can teach you Hebrew words for worship, but you won't be a worshiper until you get an instinct. Fall on your knees, raise your hand, stand up, give God the glory. Lord, bring people into my life that cause me to have new experiences that show me how to put my foot on things that I would not have put my foot on without them. They are sponsors and mentors and tutors who bring your feet to new horizons and let you touch places you've never touched before. And you feel what it feels like to conquer. My mother says she believes I'm a speaker today because she applauded me talking to her in the kitchen. She was, well, had a master's in child development and she says, children don't have respect for their thoughts when parents don't pay attention. 